Good morning, everyone. This is John, host of MGTOW is Freedom. Welcome and thank you very much to everybody who, who stops by, says hi, leaves comments. Um, I wish I could get to more of the comments. My life is so incredibly busy on the personal side and on the professional side. And as an introvert, I just get my ass kicked every day and I'm so tired. So tired, but enthusiastically, I keep coming back to life so it can pound me around. But one of the things I do, because that's what I am, is I treat the world like I'm the boss. I have to be the one who makes the rules because I actually do know better, right? And it's not just about my life personal, it's about my life professional. But this got me to thinking, you know, we go through life, us men do, and we're told that we're equal to women. Uh, that means no one's the boss, except we know that when you get into a relationship with a woman, at some stage, typically very early on, she tries setting the rules. And the person who sets the rules starts dictating how that relationship works. As MGTOW, as men, we have to understand that we're the boss or we're not going to play the game. So let's talk about what it means to be a boss, right? Be in charge, be the man, the head honcho, the cheese, number one, the chief, numero uno, the, you know, the big kahuna. That's, that's who you have to try and be in life. Because if you're not the lead dog, right, in the sled pack, you're, the view is the same everywhere else, right? It's someone else's ass. So what I'm saying is we need to be men. So I know a lot of guys, they go, man, I wish I was the boss. And I'll say, hey, do you take my seat for the day, try out the boss pants, see how you like it. And then they're like, no, we don't want your particular job. We just want to be the boss, right? I go, good, then you need to treat everything basically like a business. The decisions have to be good. They have to be based on real, uh, reality. And that video I did on uh, women run businesses and businesses that are being demanded to have women on the boards, right? They're asking for trouble. The board of directors in the world of you needs to be you. That doesn't mean you can't have a committee where you get more information, i.e. from her, or that you can't have someone give you ideas or take a poll and find out what she likes, but you've got to be the one in charge. But let's look at what a boss does at a job. The boss is responsible for making all of the important decisions. They set the time and the day, the hours, they set the workload, they set the goals, the direction the business takes, they're in charge of policies and procedures, they're in charge of discipline and punishment. They decide whether someone can be hired and when they need to be fired. Now, what's interesting is in this relationship where it's the boss-employee dynamic, that employee doesn't have to stay with you. It is their choice. They get to decide whether working for you, as you know, with you as the boss, benefits them. They get to decide, and they can leave any time they want. Just as you as the boss, you can get rid of them, or you can hire them any time you want. But just because they have the ability to leave doesn't mean you need to surrender your role as the boss, right? This is, you know, on the professional level. Now, for some reason, most men um, have this ability to be the boss, but they don't take that role. Men who are really in charge have jobs in supervisory positions or management or have a lot of experience in front line. They can step up and take charge, but they get home, they're tired, they're whipped, they're exhausted, and there's a woman there, if they have a woman, and she's waiting to do her job. But that doesn't mean she's not going to try some kind of a coup, right? Coup d'etat, take over the power. And they inch their way in. They start with disobeying, refusing to do as they're told, refusing to do as they're asked, and then making demands. Yada, yada, yada. Pretty soon you have the lunatics running the asylum, in a manner of speaking. This happens in everyday jobs. And I, and I deal with it all the time with a number of employees trying to just fuck with you a little bit. 
Uh, you have to be the boss when you're the boss at work. So if we apply this to our relationships with women, why would you at any one time go to an employee, this girl in the relationship, the one who is subordinate to you, and say to her, you go ahead and you make the rules. You decide what's going to happen with this relationship. You decide where we're going to go. You decide what I get to do, what I get to eat, when it's going to happen. You make all the plans. You set the schedules. You set the dates. Right? You make the decisions. You can't be the boss. You can't be the man in the relationship and give an employee that much responsibility. And by employee, I mean the woman. Right? Either you're the boss or you're not. You have to take that initiative. It's a lot of fucking work to do it at work and then do it at home. You know, one of the things I think is a great idea is to write all the rules down. Literally write them down. Fuck, put them on paper, print them out. These are the rules. If I catch you breaking them, we're going to have some problems. It's the same thing at work. You interview people. You find one that fits the bill. They start performing the job. You make sure they know what the job is. When they start making mistakes, you correct their behavior. If they refuse to correct it, refuse to accept their job, that is, the responsibilities you've given them, then they are refusing to accept the job. They just want the pay. Same thing over in the personal relationship. If you've got a relationship with a woman, you lay down the rules and say, this is the direction we're going. This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. This is what must be done. And if that woman refuses to do it, if she argues, back talks, right, acts sneaky, she is saying she wants the job and the pay, but not willing to do the work. So if you hired someone in your business and they refused, you'd throw them and go, there's the fucking door. You're fired. Get your shit out of the locker and fucking leave. Because I don't have time to chase behind you, clean up your mess, remind you on a daily fucking basis what the rules are and how the program works and what's expected of you. Get the fuck out of here. In your personal life, it's got to be the same way. You just... you. When they fuck up, you've got to tell them. If they refuse to accept responsibility for what they did, acknowledge what the rules are and agree to follow the rules from that point forward, you go, there is the fucking door. Or the next time they show up, the door's just locked. Get the fuck out. It's all up to you. You don't have to fucking face them down and argue with them because they're going to beg their way back. Oh, let me back in. And it's like, no, I told you what the rules were. You refuse to follow. You refuse to accept responsibility for your failure to follow. You refuse to acknowledge that you would from that point forward. You're out of here. And the peace and satisfaction you'll get in your life will astound you when you act like a man. Doesn't mean act like an asshole. You don't have to act like an asshole. You don't have to be a dick. You don't have to scream and yell. You don't have to threaten to hit them. Just like at work, you don't do those things. You don't even have to threaten to fire them. You just say, this is what's expected. Now here's where the fucking rubber meets the road. Is women don't really mean that they want what you're telling them that they